The accident had occurred 200,000 miles from Earth. Lovell, Swigert, and Hayes rode in the lunar module attached to a lifeless command module. Apollo 13 had started as a mission of scientific exploration. It was now a matter of survival. Since the command module was dead, except for the oxygen and power hoarded for re-entry, the guidance platform of Aquarius, designed to land on and take off from the moon, would have to be used. The first milestone, and I consider this after the accident, I guess, more or less the survival now, the first milestone was to get alignment on the limb platform. Alignments are important, you know, because uh, without knowing exactly which way the attitude of a spacecraft is in space, there's no way to tell how to burn or how to use the engines of that spacecraft to get the, pro the proper trajectory to come home. In the position we are now on the Earth-Moon plane, we have to go around the, the, uh, the moon to get back if we're going to use the dips engine. You would have had enough capability with the SPS engine, but of course we don't dare use that now. So we have to go to the back side of the moon and come back. To get into the correct orbit around the moon, the crew had burned out of a trajectory that would automatically bring them back to Earth. They would have to get back onto a safe course toward Earth. He needs to put his uh, throttle to men also, flight. Throttle to men? Yes, he's at 29% now, roughly. This maneuver again was uh, completed on time, and because it was a manual burn, we had a three-man operation. Jack would uh, take care of the time. He'd tell us when to light off the engine, when to stop it. Fred handled the uh, pitch maneuver. I handled the roll, roll maneuver, and I pushed the buttons to start and stop the engines. Aquarius, and you go for the burn. Okay, Aquarius, you're looking good. Auto shut down. The first problem was solved. They were back on the path to Earth. But there were many other problems to be solved. From a building at Houston's Manned Spacecraft Center, systems experts coordinated the coast-to-coast -coast effort to get the crew back. One of the big problems was consumables. There would be enough to eat and drink. But in space, there are other factors. Oxygen to breathe, electrical power to keep the spacecraft alive, water to cool the equipment and keep it operating. What we'll be doing till we get them back on the water is concentrating on everything that is de their, their lives are dependent upon at the moment rather than worrying about the accident because there's nothing we can do about that now. This, it appears at the present time that everything is under control and that uh, we have a safe situation at the moment. Hey, I want to say you guys are doing real good work. So are you guys, Jack. We are about 70 hours from home, and uh, we think we have uh, uh, the situation in control. We've projected the uh, consumables, as I've described, and uh, we have a plan for carrying out the rest of the mission, but uh, uh, there's going to be no relaxation at all, as far as that goes, from now until splash. There was a key decision to be made before Apollo 13 went behind the moon. Where to bring them down? Their present course would take them to the Indian Ocean, where recovery would be difficult. A burn to bring them home quicker would take them to the Pacific Ocean near the recovery forces. Bringing them home even faster would place them in the South Atlantic, again away from recovery forces. It was decided to take them to the Pacific. We've run uh, these simulators both here and at the Cape and at the contractors that, uh, continuously ever since uh, last night. We've tried to simulate virtually everything that we've had the crew to do that, uh, that is non-normal that they've done. And uh, we've proven most everything that we've uh, been able to, uh, to run on the simulator prior to passing it up to them. There may be some details we haven't done, but. At least we've checked the feasibility of everything we've done, and we'll continue to do that. They passed 137 miles from the moon. For Lovell, it was the second time that he had seen the moon so near. But there was no time for contemplation. There was another critical burn coming.
And in Houston, the newsmen poured in to tell an anxious world the story. Shortly after Apollo 13 had separated from the Saturn third stage, the stage had been sent on to a trajectory toward the moon. Its impact would be recorded by the seismometer left by Apollo 12. By the way, uh, Aquarius, we see the results now from uh, 12's seismometer. Looks like your booster just hit the moon and it's uh, rocking it a little bit. Well, at least something worked on this flight. I'm sure glad we didn't have a limb impact, too. Jim, you uh, go for the burn. Go for the burn. Roger, runner, go for the burn. Guidance okay? We're good, flight. Control okay? We're okay, flight. Tell me. We're go, flight. Inco okay? We're good, flight. Ground confirms ignition. We're burning 40%. Boris Houston, you're looking good. Roger. Shut down. Roger, shut down. I say that was a good burn. Roger, now we want to power down as soon as possible. Understand. To conserve the electric power and cooling water, the crew shut down all but the vital life-sustaining systems of the LEM. I think the LEM spacecraft's in uh, excellent shape, and I think it's fully capable of uh, getting the crew back uh, I think as we have found before, every time we've put the LEM spacecraft to a test, it's always done much more than it was guaranteed to do, and I think this is a good case in point. Conserve the consumables, cooling water, electric power. The LEM water gun was leaking, and uh, we shut that off. Uh, I guess it leaked about a quart of water, I would, I would estimate. But it took me about two days to get my feet dry, and of course, it is, uh, I think you were all aware that the temperatures were going down in the, both vehicles, and uh, uh, it's made for very chilly feet for a couple of days. will come back safe. If I may be serious for one moment and ask the entire audience for a moment of prayer for the crewmen of the Apollo 13. We'll hold silence for a moment, please. <laughs> A stands at 62% and B at 62%. I see we were throwing a hell of a long time without any sleep. We had to start thinking about getting people back to sleep again because uh, I, uh, I didn't get any sleep last night at all. Command module just slowly kept going down in temperature until I think uh, just prior to reentry, uh, it was down to about 38 degrees. And along with that, it was a, a sort of a chilling uh, coldness. The walls were perspiring, the windows were completely wet, and it, uh, it wasn't too healthy. I recall that we went in there to get some hot dogs one day, and it was like reaching into the freezer for the, for the food. So if you want my opinion of how they handled the situation when it happened, they handled it exactly like we'd expect them to. They, they were about as well on top of it as anybody could be knowing what we knew, which is...